ek gesels vanochtend met Dr. Christopher Triesos en hy is verbonden aan die Universiteit van Kaapstad. Uh, Dr. Triesos, welkom welcome to Groot Plaas. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, thank you for having me. Now, uh, according to the study, you have found that more than a billion cows worldwide will experience heat stress by the end of the century if carbon emissions are high. Please elaborate, what, what do you mean by that? So, there are about a billion cattle on the planet already today for dairy farming and the beef industry and other livelihoods. And what our projections show is that if we keep burning fossil fuels, so coal, oil and gas, how much the planet is going to heat up, it could heat up as much as four degrees Celsius by the end mm. of the century. Sure. And if at the same time we cut down tropical forests and deforest other areas to expand cattle farming, we could be expanding cattle farming by about an extra one billion cows sure. into the areas that are going to be at the most severe heat stress. So that's mm. tropical regions, some subtropical regions like the parts of north of South Africa. Mm. And that this is clearly an, an unsustainable way to do things. Mm. Um, if by destroying forests to expand cattle farming, we're making climate change worse and we're also putting those cows at severe risk of heat stress, then mm. even the cattle ranching we think we're, we're creating is unsustainable. Mm. Why would you say, why was there a need to undertake a study like this? I mean, what, what, what are some of the heat points and what are, the, what are some of the, um, the interactions and the things you've seen um, that led to this study? Yeah, that's a really good question. So as scientists for the last many decades, there's been a big focus on the risk from climate change to mm. crops, mm. such as maize and wheat from droughts or flooding or heat waves. There's been much less focus on the risks from climate change to livestock, mm. especially mm. cattle. And so we undertook this study to really try and fill that gap in knowledge and help build understanding of the types of risks cattle farming and livestock farming could face and mm. how we can now, if, if we look at the study, it must have been uh, quite an undertaking to do a study like this. How did you approach it? So it, it took us about three years to do the study. Uh, it, it was led by an author called Dr. Michelle North from the University of KwaZulu-Natal. She's brilliant because she's both a vet and a climate change researcher. Mm. And so what the team did was look at case studies from all around the world, from South America, Africa, Asia, Europe, the United States, mm. where cattle have been exposed to extreme heat, such as heat wave conditions, and look at what the outcomes were, how it reduced mm. fertility, how it increased, uh, increased deaths, how mm. it reduced production. And then we gathered all of that data together to get this global picture of as the planet warms with climate change, what would the risk be to cattle farming? Mm. And, and obviously, if we look at some of these case studies, um, how is there any comparison between, you know, uh, the cattle here in South Africa and internationally? How, was, how does that, that numbers look like? Yeah, so, so one thing the study is very clear about is that if we keep burning fossil fuels, coal, oil and gas, mm. keep destroying forests, it's going to get hotter everywhere, and that is going to be bad for cattle almost everywhere, including in South Africa. Mm -hmm. So right now, global warming is about 1.1 degrees Celsius more than 150 years ago. Mm -hmm. We have a chance, if we stop burning fossil fuels rapidly within the next few decades, mm -hmm. to limit global warming around 2 degrees Celsius. Mm -hmm. And if we do that, heat stress for cattle in South Africa will be twice as bad later this century than it is now. Mm. But if we don't stop the fossil fuels and we just keep going, uh, so instead of stopping global warming around two degrees Celsius, we go to four degrees Celsius, mm. then heat stress for cattle will be around four times worse mm. by the end of the century. And at that level, uh, we st so what it's showing basically is farmers have to adapt, yes. but the hotter it gets, the more expensive and the more difficult it gets to adapt. Mm. Right. Oh, you can provide, say, shade cloths, you could provide some kind of misting, mm. other cooling, mm. but by four degrees Celsius um, in the more tropical and subtropical parts of South Africa, it might be very difficult to farm, farm certainly dairy, dairy cows uh, off, the, off, the, <clears throat> off the land and yeah. 
we look at things like different breeds, but a lot more research needs to be done on mm. uh, how adaptable different animals are to the heat and the, the viability of cattle farming at those extreme heat levels. But it doesn't look good. It looks like we should really try and limit global warming as low as possible. Absolutely. When, when I see a study like this, I always try to um, explain it practically. So, so we sit now with this and we, we, we see heat stress. For somebody who might not know, why is something like heat stress? First of all, what is it? And why is it, um, so I want to say dangerous to cattle? Why, why is they worry about heat stress? Yes, yeah, so I think as, as many cattle farmers will know, uh, cows are very susceptible to heat stress. And, and what it does, we're talking here about not just it being hot, but also when it's humid. Mm. So when you get a combination of heat and humidity, then the air temperature is high, but also the air is holding a lot of moisture. And so it's hard for animals to cool themselves um, because of that combination of, of heat and humidity. Mm. Losing heat through the skin or through other processes is more difficult. Mm -hmm. And when cattle are under heat stress, there's lots of evidence from different studies that it can lead to it can lead to death from mm -hmm. heat as they can't cool themselves, but also it can reduce their immune systems, which might mean that although we don't see it as a direct death from heat, mm -hmm. that the cattle are, are less fit and subsequently suffer from other illnesses and diseases mm -hmm. that might kill them. It can also reduce their reproductive success, their fertility. It can reduce the milk yields. Um, and so for, for many dairy farmers, dairy mm. farming mm. is largely in cooler parts of countries. And that's why, because heat stress is such a big risk for that industry. So I'm right if I say that this can have a catastrophic um, impact on the agricultural sector. Um, and, and I'm not saying that lightly. If things go on the way it's going on, um, what would that scenario look like? Let's say if we could look into the future, what would that picture look like for the agricultural sector? Yeah, ab absolutely. So the, the one of the kind of worst case scenarios here is that we keep using fossil fuels at greater and greater levels, and we see uncontrolled global warming of 40 degrees Celsius or more by the end of the century. At that level, it would be very, very stressful for many cattle in South Africa, especially in more tropical parts, mm. uh, so in Natal, into Mpumalanga and Limpopo. And it would be very difficult for many of our farmers to adapt because adaptation methods such as perhaps air conditioning for cattle, if we look into an extreme future, would just be too expensive. Mm. And so it is an alternative future though. Yeah. Uh, if we act as a society to reduce our consumptions of fossil fuels this decade, and for the rest of the century, then we can limit global warming mm. below mm. 2 degrees Celsius, which is a target that the world's governments have agreed to. But action is still insufficient. Mm. And if we limit global warming to that level, below 2 degrees Celsius, then there are opportunities available for adaptation. People can look into different breeds of cattle, things like shade cloth, um, things like moving herds at different times of the day, um, shifting dairy production to cooler regions, mm. but it, there will still be impacts. And, and part of this research is to raise awareness among people and get them interested in how to adapt mm. and to invest more in those adaptation programs. Mm. When, when we start talking about climate change, um, in Afrikaans we've got a saying that says, uh, there's a fight as a qui. Now, it's, 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 yeah. it's a fact that climate change can't be changed and fixed in a year, in two years. It's a very, it's not, an, there's not an immediate solution. So in your eyes, I mean, obviously when, when a study like this is being done, there has to be solutions or guidelines. What would those solutions or practical guidelines be to, to step into the better alternative, not the worst alternative picture? <clears throat> That's correct. You're absolutely correct. There's no quick fix for this. Mm. But it is important that we start to act fast. And there are two types of actions we can take. The first one is reducing consumption and use of fossil fuels. Mm. So moving more to renewable energies away from coal power. 
moving more to electric transport, particularly public transport, mm. away from petrol and diesel powered vehicles. So everything we do to reduce fossil fuel burning, which leads to greenhouse gas emissions in the atmosphere that causes climate change. Mm. And when we stop the greenhouse gas emissions, then we will stop climate change. It's a slow process, but it's one where it takes a long time to do those transitions. And so it's important that we have to start acting now. Mm. And this decade is, we've left it quite late. We've known about this problem for a long time. And so it's really urgent that we start taking action now as a society, as a government, as lobby groups, but also as individuals. Mm. And so on the individual side, at the farm scale, mm. a lot of what can be done is adaptation. And that is knowing that climate risks are here, knowing that they will increase, mm. and being ready to invest and seek solutions around adapting. And that's where in the livestock sector, there are already options such as increasing shade cloth and misting, but many of them are quite expensive for a lot of South African farmers. And so it's important that we look to new forms of financing for adaptation mm. for farming, and also think very seriously about the future of cattle farming more generally. Mm. So one thing this research shows is that we can't have a future with high climate change and a very large expansion of cattle farming. Mm. That's a very difficult and unsustainable future. Mm. So at, a, at a level of someone off farm, what it's saying is that we have to make some very careful sustainability choices, diet choices globally. For mm. example, um, people in parts of rich countries consuming a less beef intensive diet that doesn't take as much beef from uh, large cattle farming in Brazil, where the expansion destroys the Amazon mm. and leads to more greenhouse gas emissions. And instead, it might be that we have to limit some of our beef consumption, but also source it from sustainable areas like grasslands and rangelands that have historically had large numbers of grazing animals. Mm. Have We're sitting now in 2000 and, well, 2023. Um, have you seen or has the industry, um, academics, has there been a change in people's mindsets? Obviously, we hear climate change and we hear, um, we hear the risks. And we, have you seen a mind change in, in, let's say, the general public? Are we moving in a right direction or is there so much more that can be done? and should be done? Obviously, the answer is yes for that. <laughs> I, th I think you're right. Both things are true. So as a climate change researcher, I'm seeing more and more interest in climate change mm. in South Africa and also internationally. I think part of that is we're starting to experience some severe climate impacts in our lifetimes. True. That for is example, true. The drought in Cape Town mm. was about three times more likely because of human-caused climate change. Mm. Every rainfall events like what caused the Durban floods are also being made more likely because of climate change. Mm. In Europe right now, we're seeing extreme heat waves because mm. of climate change. So as we see these impacts, people are getting more interested in climate change, the awareness is increasing. And I think the importance of what a lot of the researchers are saying is it's urgent that we act now to limit how much worse these things get. Um, the analogy I'd like to use is it's, if, we, if you imagine as, as human society, we're in a car and we're on this fossil fuel highway. Yeah. We've been burning fossil fuels for a long time. We've been heating up the planet. And there's an exit ramp coming up. And that's the exit ramp for 1.5 degrees of global warming. Yeah. We could hit the brakes hard on the fossil fuels now and we could take that exit. And the world at 1.5 will be a more dangerous place, but we have the technologies and we have the innovation and over time we could adapt. Mm. And if we miss that 1.5 degrees exit, it doesn't mean we're committed to all the way to four degrees in an extremely dangerous planet. We can still get off at 1.6 or 1.7. We have to, as society, fight really hard to get off this fossil fuel highway as fast as possible mm. so that we are able to adapt to the risks and over time learn to thrive. Mm. We've got around one minute left. I just quickly want to hear from you. Um, obviously, a study like this is undertaken for a reason. Now, findings have been found and there's a, there's a whole study showing what can be the risks. Where would you like this study to end up? On whose 
um, desk or in whose office? Where should this information go to? Thanks. <laughs> this information is really for, for three audiences. The one is like we're doing right here. It's talking to people, yeah. members of the public, people who might be cattle farmers themselves to help raise their awareness and interest around climate change as a topic and something that we have to take action on mm. this decade. The second one is, I think, it's really trying to increase the interest of researchers mm. in understanding climate change risks to livestock, not just crops, but also the animals that we farm. Yes. And then the third one is governments in the private sector. A lot of these adaptation actions cost a lot of money, um, but there is a lot of money in the world. We know that there is more than enough finance around mm. to take the climate actions we need, but we need the regulations and the investment from the private sector to direct that finance to climate solutions. And so hopefully by talking about it more and doing studies like this in important industry sectors like cattle farming, we demonstrate that there's a lot of need for adaptation to climate change. Absolutely. Uh, Dr. Trisos, thank you for your time this morning. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Dank dat jij ingeskakel het. Uh, hier gaan ons vir die week. Ek hoop jy het goeie planne en goeie ding wat vir jou wacht hier die week. Bly net daar die groot ontbijt span. Groet jy om 6 uur vanochtend en ek en jy sien mekaar natuurlijk morgenochtend. Nog een kopje koffie saam. Tot ziens.